Real life street stars. We in here with South Fame. What it is, boy? Hey, what's going down? Mr. Too Lit in the building. Appreciate y'all for having me, though. Man, for all these niggas that don't know Def Dumb, stupid, living up under a rock, man, tell these nigga where you from and how long you been doing your thing. Man, I'm from Oak Cliff, Texas. I've been doing this for three years. Three years and counting, to be honest with you. Man, you come from a hard place, man. Oak Cliff, Texas, man. Uh, t- man, give us a little bit of a rundown of your, uh, your upbringing. Man, it was, I mean, like, it was the hood. So, like, you see everything every day. Like, you know, still got to go to school. Still got to do all that. Still got to have a straight mindset on the whole thing. Even though all that's going on around you can't get caught up. What's the craziest thing you seen growing up in the clip? The craziest thing I seen? Like, oh, my God, that's just happened. <laughs> Man, I seen this dude get beat with a bat. Like a steel bat, like, for sure. He yeah. <laughs> got beat with a bat. Bad. Steel bat? Hey man, he broke his dough down with a bat. <laughs> this shit crazy. What made you want to get into the music? What made me get into the music was, you know, I, I like I can tell my story through a microphone and a dozen people can hear it without me going toe to toe with everybody. Hey, listen to this, listen to this. Now I can tell my story through a microphone and it, it can touch everybody. Now, um, there are a lot of prolific offers prolific artists that came out of Oak Cliff. What are some of the ones that influenced you when you was coming up young? Man, I'm be honest, like, I really, I really didn't listen to so many Oak Cliff artists. Okay. But just who in, who in general? Like, I listen to Freddie. I listen to a lot of Trap Boy Freddie. Okay. Shit, man. Is it, have you ever linked up with him or whatever? Yeah, I, I link up with him and chill with him. I done been places with Freddie. For sure. yeah, that's crazy, man. Because, you know, a lot of it's hard. A lot of Dallas artists don't link up. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't build relationships. They just, it's kind of like, it's a weird space for niggas and for rappers in Dallas right now. Yeah, like with Freddie, like, I wasn't rapping when I was chilling with Freddie. Yeah. Like, like his, uh, his cousin, I call him my big bro. So, like, me and him was like, I chill with him and then, boom, we'll go to the shop and do what we do now you you missed the too lit yes sir <laughs> what makes you too lit like what tell us about too lit what what is that lifestyle like what does that mean being too lit mean like you just lit all the time like you really love to have fun you love the environment regardless of what's going on good or bad you lit regardless like you know can't nothing steal your joy okay now now i have to paint this scenario you, you you come outside of your, your your little duck off, you know what I'm saying? Your little your, your little duck off bitch, you know what I'm saying? You, you go to your car where you know you parked. Yeah. <laughs> you know you parked. She told you park right here. You park there, and you come outside. Your car gone. You still too lit? No, I ain't too lit then. <laughs> 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 I'm nah, mad in the nah, bitch right nah, now. Nah, I'm mad. I'm mad right now, man. It's it's up there. Yeah. It's, it's one of those. It's up there. But like once I figure out the situation, I'm I'm sitting. I'm you know I'm gonna get back to the same too lit person I am. Sauce fame. How did you get that name? Like in Dallas, I used to have a promo team called Sauce Gang, and like when I went out to college, like we used to. Um, like when I went out to college, like I had dropped the whole promo team and everything. And I just went out to college and somebody had called me Sauce one day from across the yard. And like, I was like, man, y'all still know me as that. And then like, they just kept calling me Sauce. And like, that's where it came from. And fame stand for, for all my expectations. So it was like everybody in my circle got one expectation to be successful. We all do different things, but our main thing is to be successful. Now, um, I know you get this a lot. Uh, you know, being that there's so many different sauces, sauce individuals. <laughs> How do you combat that stigma that you you trying to separate yourself from these sauces over here and you sauce fame? Cause it's like when you look at it, like I feel like I'm the only sauce, I'm only sauce fame. Like the sauce, the sauce twins, all of that. They they really don't bother me. Like I yeah. stay in my I stay in my own lane. Tell us about the sauce fame experience. Like when you come to my show, you just not gonna just not gonna see me move side to side. I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna interact with my crowd, I'm gonna see how y'all feeling, and then like I feed off some of y'all energy. Now, 
tell us about fan love because there's a lot of artists who don't know how to reciprocate fan love at all. They say it always makes them feel like thrown off a little bit. Nah, fan love to me, it showed me like where I'm at now because I know where I've been. I know where I was. So like embracing the fans, y'all the ones that got me where I am now. So why not? Now you got the, the song Too Lit, man. Tell us about how that song came into existence. What was the tell us about the creation of it? Too lit. I was I'm gonna tell you, I was laying in the bed and like when I heard the beat, I was just like, man, you know this song like sound like a, a club bang or something. So like when I thought about it, it was just like everybody be like, everything lit, this lit, that lit. So I was like, man, I said too lit. So I was like, man, you know what? I'm finna run with it. So when I made it, I made it in like 15 minutes. And then I called my little partner, and I was like, bro, how this sound? He was like, bro, that's a banger, bro. <laughs> there, ever since then, like, the song, we been made the song, like, a year ago. But we just, like, started to push it. Tell us about the grind, you know what I'm saying? When, you, when you're an artist, you first coming into the game, and you're trying to figure out where your lane is in your space. Tell us about that process of becoming Sauce Fame, just coming into his artistry. Like, I, when I started, like, it was just, like, with me, how, how I got started was, like, I started rap, and when I started rap, I just jumped straight into it. Like, no, I didn't have no mix, no master, no mixtape, I just did it. And like, when I did, like, I began, like, to listen to myself, I was like, oh man, hold up. Like, I don't sound like, I don't sound like this need to be on the radio or nothing. Then it's just like, nah, like, so I took off a year to get, like, the business of it, learn the business of the rap game, and learn the rap game, period. So like when I learned the rap game, I picked it up. And this time when I started over, I came straight in. And we went straight forward. Tell us about your last trash bar. Like you was just like, you spit this bar and you was like, man, this, I can't even believe I just said this shit. <laughs> man, what I say? Uh, <laughs> I had said something like, I had said something like, I forgot. Honestly, I'm gonna be honest. I ain't never really had a trash bar. Like when you think about it. Now tell us about the bar that you was like, I got this rap shit. Like I got this shit on lock. Like when you knew that this was the bar that solidified you as a a nigga that can rap. I had said, uh, I said we like, I said we like Gucci and Keisha, no Bobby Whitney. Shout out Solo. He seen some memory where others seen dope in a semi. You had me at Gucci and Keisha, no Bobby and Whitney, nigga. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a perfect. That's a perfect comparison of what you want to be and what you don't want to be. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you go into the studio and you're trying to create a body of work, what kind of atmosphere do you need to best create? When I make my music, it's like I listen to. I listen to like the old music, like Biggie, and I come all the way up into now. And then like when I make my music, it's like, I know I gotta tell you something about me, but then I gotta give you something that you can relate to. So it's like, you just wanna hear all about me through a song. You gonna hear something you can relate to a lot. So it was, just, it's just like, the atmosphere just be like, it just come like, when I, like, I can wake up at three o'clock in the morning. And I'd be like, man, you know what? I feel like writing a song. I go from writing one song to go to writing like six songs. What's the longest you've ever been in the studio? The longest I ever been in the studio was like three to four hours because of the simple fact I write at home. When I write at home, I be having like eight, nine, ten songs ready to go as soon as I hit the studio. Now, uh, you don't hear, it's not really common no more for individuals to actually write. Um, everybody likes to freestyle, quote unquote. Uh, tell us why you still write. I still write because you gotta look your thoughts. Like you get a lot of thoughts out of writing. Like I, I don't knock nobody to freestyle. But sometimes like some of the freestyles be like sounding stupid. But like when I write facts. Like, yeah, like, like I'm serious. Like some of the some of the freestyles like to me like like I know you didn't write it. I know you freestyled it. I know you punched in. Or you had to. So it's just like when you write, it just make everything flow differently. Man, you know, and I'm not, I don't knock no nigga for punching in, but for me it's like, um, if you're gonna be the nigga that punch in, don't make it, don't don't sound like you punching in. <laughs> and, then, and then you be like, uh, uh, hey, 
cut that, cut that. <laughs> you forgot to cut the main part. You. Have you ever got to sit in on another rap nigga session, like another rap artist session? Man, <laughs> yeah. What's the longest you done sat in on another artist session while when they I tried to finish first, one song? When I first started, he wasn't even a rapper. He's like an older guy, he like 64, and he was making a, a R&B jam. And like, it was just like, <laughs> R and B don't got no age limit though. You right, you right. But him, he had an age limit. Bro. He was he was done. Yeah, he, was, he was done. He was done when he talked. And the thing about it, he was like, oh, you know, I'll be back tomorrow to work, finish working on my album. I said, oh, he just didn't make a song. He making an album. He said, yeah, man, it's tough recording him. I said, wow. The studio yeah. time out just went up. This is just out. Yeah. The, the cops for an hour just went up. He told him. He said, you pay sixty an hour. I was like, yeah, I pay 60 L. He said, oh man, they be up here charging me 120. I said, for an L. <laughs> man, bro, it'd be funny, bro. Man, that, I take that lick, though. Yeah. What do you think is better? The Popeye chicken sandwich or the Chick fil A chicken sandwich? I haven't even had Popeye's chicken sandwich. I had the Chick fil A chicken sandwich, though. And that, <laughs> man. That bitch delicious. Man, that is Popeye's. I know Popeye's ain't messing with them. You don't fuck with Popeyes? Oh yeah, I love that chicken. That yeah. shrimp. Yeah. That shrimp hard to bitch. Man, what? You can get I ain't number. gonna lie, it's hard to pass up on the shrimp to get the It's hard to pass on the shrimp. Like the shrimp, that's 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 the <laughs> that's the killer right there. Now, let's say you meet a little you meet you a little breezy, you know what I'm saying? You know, y'all have a cool little vibe, man. You feeling her. Do you take her to Thanksgiving dinner the next day? No, 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 no. You can't meet my family. Hey, we can we can FaceTime, we can text. No, we ain't finna do all that. I'm sorry. I mean, you can't so, even come around the people like when that. When is the appropriate time to take uh your a, a young lady to meet the family? Like uh, on the holiday shit. Mm. We gotta be we gotta be locked in for at least seven months, eight months. Like, cause I can't we can be locked in for like five, six months, but it's like, I don't know, your real true colors might come out when you see my family. So nah, them like, true colors come out when you get them pregnant. That's when them true yeah. colors come out. <laughs> them true, true colors. That color black, the color orange. Trust me, I know. <laughs> hey, you see purple, green, they start, they start mixing colors, red and blue, like, damn. Hey, is it you all right? It's going on? What's the shystiest shit that's happened to you during your career? The shystiest? Yeah. It's crazy, but like I ain't really. I take that back. I had paid. I had paid a radio DJ, and like when I paid him, like we had paid him whatever. So he was like, "I'm gonna run it wherever I'm at." I was like, "Okay, cool." I was young and dumb. He didn't. He didn't even work in no clubs. He was at concerts in K104. But like it was just like I never heard my music. I heard it one time at Moneybag. But I was just I was like, man, that's cold how you did me though. But it's cool. I wasn't tripping. What did you learn from that experience? Don't never give me your money unless you know where they working at. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> How important is branding? Because you got a lot of artists who don't want to spend money or don't want to do spend it. They rather spend it on other things like their look or the materialistic things instead of branding themselves. How important is branding? Branding is very important. Like you can't go out. You can't go out and say you're a rapper and. Like how we how we find you? Like what like what is about you that can make us find you on Instagram? What what can we see you in? Like I mean, don't get me wrong, the looks is great, but like once you brand yourself and get where you need to go, like the the looks gonna come with it. And social media now plays a big part in the artist development piece of um of the game, but there's still that part of the game where people like to get out and touch the people. Which part of that is your favorite? Uh, it's like oh, which social, one do you prefer more or less I like word of mouth but social media do help a lot don't get me wrong it's it's a it's a big boost right now cause it's the century we living in so it's like it, it helps a whole lot but like I really like the word of mouth type of get out there and grind if you could live anywhere else in the world and take your music anywhere else in the world where would that place be and why I take it to, hmm, I take it to LA. 
I take it to LA because of simple fact, like to me, LA know music. And like they know it like to the T. Like they know music, like for sure. And it's like, you know, like the people, the vibe out there, like with my song too lit, my the song gonna fit straight in with it. Cause it's like every Saturday I done been in LA, they don't sleep at all. So it's like they hearing they they hearing too lit. They like, oh man, we getting lit. It's every night with them. What's the craziest shit you done did in Cali? Man, I spent like five hundred dollars in the strip club, bro. It's crazy, the motherfucker. <laughs> because it only costs one hundred and fifty dollars to sit to get <laughs> to for some for some poom poom. <laughs> <laughs> you paid three hundred and fifty dollars in. <laughs> yeah, we played like we played. Yeah, we played like I think I spent five hundred. My partner spent like seven. Yeah, but we was young and dumb. See, like right now, I don't do that no more. Now let's say, um, you know, what are, what are your thoughts on being independent versus being signed? Do you feel like that's something that you want to do, be a signed artist, or do you think the independent grind is more uh more lucrative? I feel like I want to be signed because of the simple fact, like independent, like if you got your P's and Q's down and you know how to move, I feel like being signed is a little bit more extra than being independent because it's like they can take you wherever they want to take you. Like, they PRs is probably way better than most of the PRs out here. So it's like they'll take you overseas. They'll take you wherever you need to go. But, like, when you're being independent, you can only go so far. Hey Amen. You said PR. This a, that's a word that a lot of these young niggas don't know. Tell us what a PR is and why it's important. A PR is very important because it's like your PR shopping you around like wherever like wherever they at you at like she always working like for instance like my PR she great at what she do like she always shopping me around every day it's like hey sauce you alright hey sauce this is what you got coming up hey sauce this is what we got to do so it's like having a PR is very important and like I feel like if you don't have a PR like you really not doing nothing When you think about the brand you want to create and where you want to take it, what's some of the things that you haven't implemented yet that you that you plan to implement to make to bring your take your career to the next level? To take up my career to next, like like around this season, Thanksgiving and Christmas, right. it's like right now, like I want it to like have my own team. Like we feed the we feed the homeless for Thanksgiving, or or we we sit here and we give out toys on Christmas, but like we still we still building on that. So it's like that's something we get into, like where we be in uh, in the community a whole lot, where just a stage show, a rap show, like we actually in the community for real and we just not doing it for videos. The sauce fame wanna be real or rich? I'm gonna be real regardless. I mean, rich is cool, but being real you gonna become rich. So it's like either way, it's just like I say, like you don't have to be fake to you don't have to be fake to try to make money, bro. You can be you can be real as you want to be. Like you don't have to tell this lie and that lie. You just tell your story, bro. But would you say it's easier to make money when you're being fake? Uh, look at the WWF. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. I don't watch men in tights though. I'm sorry, but yeah. like seriously, <laughs> <laughs> that ain't so I don't watch men in tights. <laughs> I don't That's watch a good one. Tights, though. Nah, but it's like, you know, being fake, you no, know, yeah, it, you'll be rich, but like, what about the people that's that's really looking at you like to know the real you? Like, it's nobody that can say, Well, I know, I know sauce, and that, and that ain't what sauce be doing. Like, I know what he do. So it's like you don't never have that type of energy. You mentioned you went to school. How important is education? It's very important. Why? Because a lot of these artists don't go to school more or less no nah, it's very important though but like with me when i went to college it was just like i wasn't trying to go to college it was like my mama dropped me off and said hey i'm gone and like she 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 called text see you all right but like my like i tell you like my big bro which is shreddy cousin he told me he was just like man you don't want to be in debt out here bro so if you come in to learn come to learn but if you come to play around, you might well go back home. And that's what I did. And that motherfucking debt, boy. <laughs> 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 you 
But yeah, like that's that's really where it came from. Like I wanted to chase my dream. I I didn't want to be in school. Like I didn't have no business really being in school. I didn't have no ma uh what you call it major. I had none of that. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't. I was just there. Like I was general studies. And niggas just in the the cafeteria. <laughs> no, I do. <laughs> no, I ain't gonna lie. Like, cafeteria was nice now. Hold on. <laughs> hey, we ate some good stuff on certain days though. Hey man. Now, if you decided that you didn't want to rap no more, but you still want to be involved in music, what would you get into that would that was something that revolved around music? I become a become an MC because I used to do it. Like I used to like you know like be a an MC okay. with the DJ and yeah. all that. So, what's the craziest shit? Uh, what kind of benefits do the MC have that don't nobody know about? Man, the benefits of MC is like you get a lot of things for free. You like every hot party, if you the MC, are you laughing at everybody in the line because you already in? You ain't worried about nothing. You ain't paid no dub. You ain't paid forty dollars getting. You ain't paid nothing. And then you get all the free liquor you want. Yeah, man, it, it's just crazy because the MC hold a lot of power. The MC can get the club fucked up. Yeah, it's, it's just crazy. Just that that part of the game. So we at we about to be at the top of twenty. 20 you know at the coming to the end of the year going to 2019 going into 2020 what do you have planned for next year you know what i'm saying going into that new year with your music man 2020 gonna be gonna be that year like that's gonna be uh that's gonna be our golden year like we're gonna release we're gonna release a lot we're gonna we're gonna do a lot like we're gonna actually put out music like we're gonna drop music like we gon' we gonna give them what they've been asking for, cause they just think like too lit. That's it. Now nah, we got a lot more for sure. And then what's one thing that they don't know about Sauce Fame that they need to know? One thing they don't know that they, they need, need to, to know. know. Like and I'm very humble. I'm very humble. Like I, I don't never, I don't never get cocky like that. I'm very humble. Like for sure, I'm very humble. So at the end of your career, what do you want people to take from your music when you walk away from it? I want them to take the message that I gave in every song I, I put out. I want them to actually hear what I was talking about in my music and actually live by it. You know, like, not just, you know, like, I, I make a lot of positivity music and some music is not positive, but most of it, like, is real positive. And it's like, you know, like, I have messages in every song I make. Cause that if I don't have a message in it, I throw the whole song away. Cause it's not, it's not connecting with me, and I can't rap nothing that's not connecting with me. Cause I'm even gonna have no passion behind it. But like when I lead the game, I, I really want people to be like, well, you know, I learned this from South Swing. I learned this from South Swing. I want them to still be playing my music, like for sure. Like I want them to be like how Pac is. When you play Pac, it's like, man, I remember when that came out. Pac told this story about this girl. So it's like it was. It's, I really want. I really want that type of energy from my fans. Amen, amen. You got any shout outs? Man, I wanna shout out God for letting me just be here today. Like without him, I wouldn't be where I am right now. So it's really a blessing to be on real life street stars. I used to watch y'all a lot, bro. <laughs> watch all the little funny interviews y'all had and everything. Thank you, bro. It's a, man, it's a blessing, bro, for real. This shit here right here. And then like my, my management team, like without them, like I wouldn't be where I am. Like they always keep me going, like in my family. My family and my team, like they, they mainly push in Southern Fried Marketing and Amber. Like they make sure I get to where I gotta get to. They set me up in the best position to be successful. And I appreciate everybody that do that. And I appreciate y'all for having me though. And for everybody that need to get in contact with you for any type of bookings or features, how would they do that? Man, y'all can reach me at South Fame on Instagram. On Facebook is Man South Fame Washington. Twitter is South Fame. YouTube is South Fame. Subscribe to the channel. Run the views up on that new song Too Lit. We're going crazy for real. Hey man, hey man, man, South Fame, you got the shit going up, man. Too lit fin out right now, man. Go run that up, man. Big thanks for the new year, man. You are a real life street star, brother. Yes, sir. You gotta know that. Shout out real street stars, nigga. Moolah. Hey.